amenu venu o nyenami be mia de khlo ma vo ko wona o fia mi gododo toxe si va ma le gbogomo no fia la ganting hai pa pole alonu do wo to to wo do pa yo velia Simple as that When you love the one you're with You got to tell her When you know how to give to a child Give it, ooh, just live it now It's so I can 
tell you why What's a bad inside of me It's so simple You can get it Or you can live it It's so simple Say, come on You can get when you want to live It's so simple We can give when we want to win, we want it's to live. Uh, uh, tell me why do we cry when a no one's dying? I can tell you why, let me tell you why, baby. It's so simple. You can't give it. It's so simple. Come on, everybody, you can sing it. We can give when we want to live now. It's so, it's so, it's so simple. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Thank wow. you. We love you. God bless you. God bless you all. Wow. How can you sing like that? Can you? No. <laughs> He sing like Kung Fu. <laughs> oh, so strong. Wow. Thank you so much, Corey Feldman, and your beautiful wife. Let's have another round of applause. Very convincing. Ooh. Very simple. Ah. <laughs> Next. She is an international award-winning author, producer, playwright, and librettist who co-wrote the story for Loving the Silent Tears, the musical. She will share with us a short story called The Man in the Fire from her novel Rattler in the Ivy. Let's give a warm welcome to Cynthia Farrell. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today. Um, it is such an honor. And um, in particular, because I've been working on a new short story that I believe illustrates your plea, Supreme Master, to wake up and move faster to save our animals, our planet, and ourselves. Right? And before I get into that, I'd like to say, particularly yesterday, how bizarre it was for me to be in a place where free water was falling from the sky. And such a lot of water falling from the sky. Because I live in fire country. Oh. We don't have green mountains. We have red ones. Whoa. We have spectacular hiking trails and rattlesnakes <laughs> and howling coyotes and horses. And this time of year in particular is dangerous. Anyone who comes from my part of the country knows it. The air is so dry, your skin hurts. Whoa. There were always fires growing up, but when I was young, there was also rain. Somewhere in the 1990s, rain kind of petered out, and the fires began to burn faster. Oh, wow. They began to burn at 50 miles per hour, faster than anyone could run. Wow. And last year, they burned at 70 miles per hour, faster than people who lived in our hills could drive. Oh. Why do we wait so long when disaster is on us? Why do we stand transfixed? What does it take to wake us up? What moment makes us, as adults, move. That's what this story explores. 
uh, just as I was leaving to come here, the famous activist playwright, Donald Freed, called me up. He said that this story had won his 2019 International Writers Top Prize for Best New Work. So, thank you. I'm thrilled to be here and I'm thrilled about that too. So with that, let me tell you a story about the man and the fire. Five o'clock in the evening at Sherwood Equestrian Stables, one year and one month ago. Oh. The horse, it's a gelding, plunges out of the darkness. His gray hide is first ghostly, then luminous as a pearl against the barn's smoky black doorway. Fire glare reflects off his retinas and turns his eyes into tiki torch flames pasted on the sides of his skull. He must weigh in at a ton and a half, and he rears and he screams, his halter rope caught on something I can't see. Below him, a tiny spotted dog, a collie, whirls between his hooves, frantic, barking, trying to drive the horse where the rope won't let him go. Two stable workers, two stable hands, crazed and helpless, stumble backwards into me, their canvas jackets flapping on the heated draft, and one shouts, the stalls, they're burning as fast as gasoline. The collie moves with the opposite instinct. She weighs no more than 30 pounds. One kick will kill her, but she won't back away. She stays where she is, hassling the horse to run, run. And the gelding jerks his head and slices at her with his steel shoes and the rope stays taunt and their thrashing stirs up a blizzard of golden chaff from the stable floor. From deeper inside the wooden building, other animals shriek and crashing blows hit a wall from inside. Boards splinter off and a schoolboy, his back muscles straining, drags a young donkey out by its neck and forces it into an outside corral. The stable hands run for the splintered hole but pull up short at a series of sharp bangs like a string of firecracker explosions. That's the supply closet, the boy cries, the liniment closet. And no amount of water will save one thing. Oh. And exactly then, as if fire hears my thought, the whole upper half of the barn billows yellow, and below it, the entryway changes from smoky black to brilliant orange. And inside, the animal shrieks fade away as the roof line starts to crumble and the firecracker sounds grow loud as thunder. They're goners, a stable worker rasps. Inside, they're all gone. In the entry, alone against the glare, the dog and the horse battle on. Silhouettes now, the gelding rearing and striking, and the dog his tormentor who darts with bared teeth, and above them, the rafters fully engulf. As the upper loft buckles, the collie levitates, impossibly high, 
and bites the gelding's shoulder and falls back. The horse swings around, flashes its back hooves, catches the little dog in her ribs, and kicks her deep into the burning barn. I see the entry dissolve. The gelding plunges right and left, screaming, jerking his head, his torch eyes rolling. And then, a slip of a shadow, the collie, come creeping back. She circles, slow and limping, and stops. And for an instant, she squints out at me through a curtain of burning feed. Save yourself. Hear me as the fire did. But instead, she turns her head toward all the inside animals now silenced. Then she gathers her legs, jumps for the halter rope, misses, leaps, catches at an angle, and rips the rope free. And suddenly loose, the gelding turns to run her down, to bolt back into the barn, but the dog reads the move and bounds faster and sinks her teeth into the gray muzzle, is flung off, is back, attacks again with a final ferocity that chases the horse out into the twilight. The collie becomes a shooting star that flies toward me and falls to the dirt a tiny bundle of scorched meat with broken rib cage and tired eyes. The barn and seven animals she could not rescue, gone start to finish in under eight minutes. I don't know if I can save her. I don't know if I can save myself, and she cries out when I touch her, but I have her up, and she is in my arms, and I am finally running. Oh. Thank you. Wow, that was exceptional. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. You deserve more than just an award. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. I'm going to call now. Oh. So, uh, wrap this around. Sorry, they don't find anything better than this. It's too warm. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing story. Let's thank Cynthia Farrell with another enthusiastic round of applause. Nupola Jifa Chutowe, Nye Kafu Miapa Mokbono No Egbia, Le Kuloma Vo, Gododo toche kule gbogbo monu fia to gan tin rai. Kwa kule alonu do wotol, lolotol, akpa yue de kelia. <laughs>